Hello everyone. So in this today's INICT revision series, what I am going to discuss is about the management of the ischemic stroke. So in the today's session, I will discuss like what should be the target blood pressure in ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke and what is the indication for thrombolysis in case of ischemic stroke, what are the contraindications for thrombolysis and how, when to use the statins and as well as antiplatelets. So all that I will be discussing in the today's session. So, the first important clinical scenario is a diabetic patient, the blood pressure is 220 by 130 millimeters of mercury is brought to the casualty in a stage of coma. CT scan shows a large infarct. What is the target blood pressure of this patient to initiate the thrombolysis? Less than 200 by 130 millimeters of mercury, less than 180 by 105 millimeters of mercury, less than 160 by 100, less than 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury. So, now first and foremost, very important in order to initiate the thrombolysis, the onset of neurological deficit should have been within 4.5 hours. And the target blood pressure for initiating thrombolysis, it should be less than 180 by 105 millimeters of mercury. Now, how to achieve that blood pressure of less than 180 by 105? Let me discuss one by one. So, first and foremost, in case of acute ischemic stroke, the blood pressure should be less than 180 by 105 or 185 by 105. And in order to achieve this blood pressure, you need to give nicardipine and as well as labetalol to reduce the blood pressure to less than 185 by 105. Next, you take the other hypertension related complications that is hypertensive encephalopathy. So these patients with uh, hypertensive encephalopathy, they present with altered sensorium. They present with seizures, right? So in these individuals, what should be the target blood pressure? you need to reduce the mean arterial mean arterial pressure by 25 percentage of maximum over 8 hours and the drugs that need to be used is labetalol and as well as phenoldapam you has to be used in order to reduce the blood pressure okay next and you take the other hypertension related complication that is your subarachnoid hemorrhage so subarachnoid hemorrhage if the individual develops the target blood pressure should be less than 160 millimeters of mercury systolic and for which you need to give nimodipine and the other hypertension or other uh, hemorrhagic complication is related to your hypertension that is traumatic brain injury how much should be the mean arterial pressure mean arterial pressure like you need to maintain cerebral perfusion pressure of 60 to 70 millimeters of mercury and systolic blood pressure should be more than 100 millimeters of mercury and in order to achieve this blood pressure to up to 100 or just above 100 you need to use labetalol so these are some of the hypertension related complications target blood pressure and drugs to be used but our question was on this that is in acute ischemic stroke in order to do thrombolysis the blood pressure should be less than 185 by 105 millimeters of mercury for which you need to give nicardipine and as well as labetalol next you see the another important question cerebral infarct is earliest detected by diffusion weighted mri positron emission tomography mri scan ct scan so the ischemic changes were detected earliest by diffusion weighted MRI. So diffusion weighted MRI can detect the cerebral infarct as early as two to six hours. Right? As early as two to six hours after the onset of symptoms. Then what about the CT scan then? See, in early stages of the ischemia, CT scan is the technique of choice to distinguish hemorrhagic and as well as non-hemorrhagic stroke. However, in almost 30 to 60 percentage of ischemic stroke are still invisible in the acute stage. And that is the reason why diffusion weighted imaging as early as 2 to 6 hours after the onset of symptoms will help you in diagnosis of the ischemic stroke. Now, you see another uh, clinical scenario. A 65 year old patient of coronary artery disease develops sudden onset right sided face and as well as the arm weakness and there is also expressive dysphagia on admission the blood pressure is 160 by 100 millimeters of mercury ct scan was done and this is the ct scan of the individual which is the best step in the management of this patient 
Now, if you observe this CT scan, what is that you are having? You are having the presence of the hypodense lesion. And this hypodense lesion, it tells you it is an ischemic stroke, right? So this is an ischemic stroke. And how is the onset? It is sudden in onset. The time fraction is not being mentioned, but it is sudden in onset. And blood pressure of the individual is 160 by 100. So he is an ideal candidate for intravenous retiplase, which is nothing but your thrombolysis. And whenever you are doing thrombolysis, you should be aware of what should be the dosage of this thrombolytic agent. So in the dosage, if you observe 10 percentage of the dose, you have to give in one minute, the first minute, the remaining 90 percentage, you have to give it over 60 minutes, you have to give it over 60 minutes. And what is the dosage of the ready place that is around 0.9 milligrams per kg body weight. And what is the maximum dose of the ready place that you will be giving that is 90 milligrams of ready place you have to give. Now, another important question here is in which arterial territory the ischemia has developed in this CT scan. So if you observe here very carefully, the ischemia has developed in the MCA territory that is middle cerebral artery territory on the left side. And that is the reason why the individual is having the right sided face and as well as the arm weakness. What about the other options? So if you take the other options like intravenous nicardipine and as well as intravenous labetalol, see, you will be giving these drugs if the patient is in a state of the hypertensive crisis. So what do you understand by the hypertensive crisis? If the blood pressure of the individual is like more than 220 by more than 105 millimeters of mercury, then we call it as the hypertensive crisis. When the individual is in a state of hypertensive crisis, we need to give nicardipine and as well as labetalol, and you have to reduce the blood pressure to less than 185 by less than 105 millimeters of mercury in order to do thrombolysis. So our patient blood pressure is 160 by 100. So that is the reason why nicardipine and labetalol need not be given. Right? The answer is intravenous retiplase. Then what about this mannitol? Mannitol is what? It is an osmotic diuretic. And this mannitol should be given if there is features of raised intracranial pressure. So what are the features of raised intracranial pressure? The individual will have the headache, altered sensorium, seizures. There will be also papilledema and projectile vomiting. So if the features of raised intracranial pressure is there, then you need to give mannitol. So our patient is not having any features of raised intracranial pressure. So mannitol need not be given in this clinical scenario. But the question asked is the best step in the management. Okay, later mannitol requirement may be there. But the best step in the management in this clinical scenario is you need to do thrombolysis. Now, now our patient has presented to us within uh, suddenly, like he might have a sudden onset neurological deficit and he did not give you time frame, but you should do thrombolysis if the patient presents to you within 4.5 hours of neurological deficit, if it is secondary to ischemic stroke, then what suppose if the patient presents after 4.5 hours, after 4.5 hours, like what you need to give is the antiplatelets, which antiplatelet we give aspirin 325 milligrams we give. Okay, and there is no role of heparin and there is no role of clopidogrel. See, as we give dual antiplatelet therapy in case of the coronary artery disease, in coronary artery disease, we give aspirin and as well as clopidogrel. There is no role of dual antiplatelet therapy in case of the ischemic stroke. You should give single antiplatelet that is aspirin should be given if the patient present to you with ischemic stroke after more than 4.5 hours. Okay, right. So that is about your when to use aspirin and when to do thrombolysis. Now, you see another clinical scenario. All of the following reduce the risk of atherothrombotic stroke except the options are aspirin, blood pressure control, statin, rivaroxaban. So aspirin is an antiplatelet drug, blood pressure control and statin which is an uh, HMG coa reductase inhibitor, rivaroxaban. What is rivaroxaban? It is newer oral anticoagulant drugs. And what are the other examples of your newer oral anticoagulant drugs? The other examples are dabigatron, epixaban and as well as endoxaban. So these are the direct 
thrombin inhibitors right these are direct thrombin inhibitors and when will you use this rivaroxaban actually rivaroxaban they don't reduce the risk of atherothrombotic stroke why because this atherothrombotic stroke it is due to atherothrombotic plaque formation so what are the drugs which can reduce the plaques okay the drugs include aspirin and as well as statin along with blood pressure control they can reduce the progression of the atherothrombotic plaque and thereby they will reduce the risk of the atherothrombotic stroke there is no role of rivaroxaban to reduce the risk of the atherothrombotic stroke rivaroxaban and all we use in case of the embolic stroke like for example if the individual is having a thrombus within the heart and that can rupture which can give an emboli so if there is presence of an embolic stroke then there is role of rivaroxaban whereas in a case of atherothrombotic stroke there is no role of rivaroxaban next the next important question is about the indications and contraindications of thrombolysis which one of the following is not an indication for thrombolysis in stroke patient ischemic stroke of less than 3 hours patients age more than 18 hours sustained blood pressure more than 185 by 110 mm of mercury despite treatment ct scan showing non hemorrhage or edema in more than 1/3 of the middle cerebral artery supply now if you see this clinical scenario the question is about which of the following is not an indication for thrombolysis just now in the previous question i have taught you that the blood pressure should be less than 185 by 105 mm of mercury that is the indication for thrombolysis right if the blood pressure is more than 185 by 110 mm of mercury then the candidate should not undergo thrombolysis whereas the other mcqs if the other options if you see ischemic stroke less than 3 hours yes you have to do thrombolysis patients aged more than 18 hours right you can do thrombolysis and ct scan showing non hemorrhage or edema more than 1/3 of mca supply then that is also an indication for thrombolysis now let me tell you what are the contra indications for thrombolysis so the contra indications include number 1 if the blood pressure of the individual is more than 185 by 110 please don't do why because when you do thrombolysis in this scenario there is a very high chance of the hemorrhagic conversion and when there is bleeding tendency if you do thrombolysis the bleeding will increase and platelet less than 1 lakh if you do thrombolysis there will be increased tendency of bleeding and hematocrit less than 25% if you do thrombolysis then also there will be increased risk of bleeding and next important is if the individual had any form of stroke within 3 months don't do thrombolysis even though it's an ischemic stroke there is high chance that it can get converted into the hemorrhage so stroke less than 3 months don't do thrombolysis and if there is gastrointestinal bleed in the last week it's a absolute contraindication if the individual had a recent mi it's an absolute contraindication for thrombolysis and if there is prolonged prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time it's an absolute contraindication for thrombolysis and the usage of heparin within the last 48 hours was done then also it's an absolute contraindication for thrombolysis okay so these are the list of contraindications for thrombolysis okay so this is about the management of ischemic stroke you need to know when to do thrombolysis when to give antiplatelets when you should not do thrombolysis so this is nutshell about management of ischemic stroke and if you want any other topics please type it in the comment section accordingly i will discuss that particular topic on the subsequent sessions thank you very much